Okay, so today we're going to look at trail bike suspension setup. Obviously, with suspension for trail bike, there's always going to be some compromises. It's a sort of one bike that does it all. Today I'm riding my Scott Genius LT, 170mm travel. But it's the bike that I use for everything. I do a lot of pedaling on this, so I want my suspension to work well on the rough stuff, but also be nice and efficient for the climbs. So let's look at the, the basics of getting this suspension set. Okay, so first thing we look at is the sag. You want to have your shock and fork set in the open position to set your sag. I've got this twin lock lever, so I knock that into open. From there, I'll get that sag set as I want it, so that then when I go up to trail and climb on my rear shock, it's going to make it firmer. Lower your seat, get yourself on the bike. And you're trying to use that rubber ring to get a feel for how much that shock is settling in when you're sat on the bike with all your weight on it. I go for about 30% sag on this bike. If that rubber ring is any further down there, it means that shock's too soft. So just use a shock pump to add a bit more air if it's too soft. If that's too far up, you're not getting enough sag, then let a little bit of air out. So now let's look at the sag for the fork. As nerdy as it sounds, actually get the manual for the fork and have a look. It'll give you a pressure for your weight. It's not particularly accurate because all bikes, geometries, will put different amounts of weight on that front fork. So you'll have to play around with it a little bit, but it'll give you an idea of somewhere to start. The way I do sag for the fork is to actually get up rolling along on my bike and get in quite an aggressive position with my shoulders in line with the handlebars. So quite a lot of weight on that front fork and I'm looking for about 20% sag on that fork. That works really well for me. Again, somewhere between 20 and 30% is about right. Okay, so there's your base setting done for your sag. That's actually determining how hard or soft that shock and that fork is. It's worth mentioning to make sure you do that in your riding kit with your normal riding pack on, because that's gonna add an extra bit of weight. Get that set. So now you can start thinking about other things that are going to affect how those suspension units work. One thing worth mentioning is the volume spacers that you can use in these shocks and forks nowadays. You can actually add larger volume spacers to make those suspension units actually ramp up and be more progressive. So if you feel like you're hitting into things too hard and you're too far into your travel, you start thinking about putting these bigger spacers in so you still use the same amount of sag but your suspension gets progressively harder when it's deeper in the stroke. That works really well for aggressive riding. If you want a comfortable ride, just those smaller volume spaces might be working perfectly for you. So there's my bike set in the open mode so that it's really good for the rough downhills where I'm pushing on, riding aggressively. From there, I can go up to my middle setting for less rough trails, nice windy single track things, and then fully locked out for climbing. So now we look at rebound damping. That is going to control how fast that shock returns. This is definitely a personal preference thing. I like to have my rear shot relatively slow so it's nice and controlled. Uh, it's especially important if you're hitting compressions and also into the faces of jumps. If your bike's kicking back really fast, that can start sending weight up and towards the bars. So I like it relatively controlled. If you have it too slow, that shock's actually gonna pack. So it'll stay in and not return for the next hit. That can make that rear shock feel too hard almost. So play around with that. It's dead easy to do on the trail. On Fox shocks, it's that red dial. Clockwise and in will slow that shock down. Anti-clockwise will speed it up. Have a go messing around with that and find a nice setting that you like for the type of riding you do. Okay, so rebound damping for the fork. On my fork, it's a red dial down there. I actually like to have my fork slightly faster than the shock, so less rebound damping on the front, so it's, it's returning a little bit quicker. It feels like most of my weight is through the shock, so that's the one that I don't want kicking me. I'd rather have the fork track the floor a little bit quicker. Again, Look in your manual, it'll give you a base setting in there that should be there or thereabouts. And try going a couple of clicks either way if you want to start tweaking, but have a look at the base setting to begin with. 
Remember that suspension setup will always be a compromise between getting that suspension working really well on the rough stuff, but still efficient for pedaling. The good thing nowadays is that a lot of bikes have these lockout levers, so you've got the best of both worlds. So, there you go. Check your manuals for the base settings and make a note of what you've put your clickers on and your air pressures and things like that. So then you can just play around with your clickers one or two clicks at a time. But just remember that you won't find one setting that will work for everything. What will work some places might not work everywhere. So I like to get my set and then play around with it a little bit, but not too much. All right, so if you found this video useful, why not click like down below, that'd be good. Um, or for Suspension Forks Explained with Mark Beaumont, click up here. Or for How to Ride Rocky Descents, click down here. Or just click on me if you want to subscribe to GMBN so you don't miss any of our videos. It's free. Subscribe. <laughs> Subscribe.